Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat. In today's video, we made actually out of necessity. This is going to be a video explaining how to do the tool setup on the Prototrack RLX. And because the RLX is so much more uh, powerful in the way that you can do your tool setup with the library and such compared to our other controls, we found that there's a little bit of confusion in it at first. And so we thought we'd clarify it by making a video on all the different scenarios and how it works. So the first thing we're gonna do, you'll notice here I'm using the offline but it works exactly the same way in the machine. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna open a program. Now I've already saved us a little time and I've got a program in here. And you'll notice that it is a small piece part that has a uh, outside cycle that I'm gonna use a right turn face tool for. I've got an OD groove and I've got an OD thread. Okay, so if I was normally gonna do this the way I do all my other controls, our EX control, our SX control, our SL control, we would normally go in and make a program and then set up our tools. So if you wanna follow that same structure, this will work every time. What we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the tool table. And you'll notice here in the tool table that my part zero has not been set yet. And you'll see that I've got three tools that are in my program and it doesn't know anything about any of them. So just like in the other controls, I'm gonna start out by trying to set my part zero. And the way I do that is just to start the tool setup. So I'm gonna to go to first tool. I'm going to tell it it's a right turn face tool. I'm going to tell it it's made out of carbide. I'm going to put in the size of my tool tip. And then here I will move down to the tool setup button. And in here it shows me a diagram of the part and tells me to take a cut. Now I'm just going to touch everything off the same diameter and the same end point. So I've got a piece of one inch stock in there. Let's think of it like that. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to tell it I just took a cut. I'm at one inch. You'll notice it changes from not set to set. And then it asks me about the Z, so I face off the end of the part. I tell it that is Z0. And when I push return, you will see that not only is my first tool set, but so is the top where it says part zero. So this is turned from orange to green now, and it says that it was set using a library tool. Now, actually, this is not a library tool yet, but it's assuming that's exactly what you're going to do. So now that I know this tool is correct, I'm just going to push add to library. Now there's one more thing that I'm going to do and that's over here where it says library tool number. I'm gonna num this, number this tool number 101. The purpose for this is unlike the other controls, I can have every program use part number or tool number one, two, three, four, et cetera. And yet when I have tools in my library, I can just assign them from the library to which tool is going to be that specific tool in a program. So here to go back to my tool setup, I'm just gonna to go to tool number two. It's an OD groove, it's also carbide. There is no radius, but it has a width of 0.093. Go down to my tool setup page, and again, touch it off that one inch reference, enter, and then Z0, enter, push return. Second tool is done, add it to the library, add it to, give it a number. Now, one thing I wanna point out, when you do your tools and put them in the library, they are put in here by alphabetical order for the tool type. When I make a program, they'll always be in the order they're actually used. Okay, so I've got one more tool to go. It's an OD thread, it's carbide. And here in my tool setup page, again, I'm gonna to touch off my one inch diameter, my Z0, push return. And then you'll see that all these tools are set except for the last one's not added to the library. There it is. Put my library tool in and go. So this is exactly the same scenario as if I use the other controls and at the end of the tool setup, I push the save tools button. In this case, they're automatically saved to the library. And in this case, I can continue to add more and more tools to my library. My library tool numbers go from number 101 to 199. So I can fit basically 98 tools in here. And then I can assign them accordingly as I use them in my programs. So this completes the first part of how to use the control. And I'm gonna show you another scenario in a moment. If I was going to actually do this on a machine, I would have to reboot the machine to get this to go back to not set. I'm gonna do that by rebooting my offline. So bear with me, I'll see you back in just one second. Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat, and today I'm here with the customer service department, reminding you that when you guys call in with some sort of an issue, one of these fine people are the ones that answer the phone and help you and get you back on your way to running and making parts. If you like the videos, don't forget to hit the like button. And of course, if you'd like to subscribe, just hit this button over here. And of course, if you'd like to watch the next video that's coming up, just hit the button over here. As always, we appreciate you watching. And most of all, and most importantly, don't forget to 
Keep, Keep on, on tracking. tracking.